Since 1961, Quartz Plumbing has offered friendly, reliable service to residences all over Bergen County, New Jersey. We are a fourth-generation family-owned business, unmatched in customer satisfaction and professionalism while working in your home. We are the hydronic heating and water filtration specialists with a workmanship guarantee to put you at ease so you can rest comfortably. We offer financing for those big projects that catch you off guard, and we have a network of excellent contractors in all fields for any project you wish to tackle. Call our responsive office team, and we'll dispatch a handsome and educated technician to lay the smack down on all your plumbing issues. You can also find us at quartzplumbing.com, search us on Google, or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Like, subscribe, and share, please. Welcome to Plum Bums Podcast, the blue collar tradesman show where we talk about small business and entrepreneurship in this crazy world in 2024. Welcome to season two. Yeah. Can you believe it? I'm excited. Season two of Plum Bums. We are officially on season two. This is our first episode. We're super pumped about it. We've been uh, trudging along and still making away at editing quality footage for you guys. What do you think? Still yes? making no money. <laughs> doing it yeah where are all these sponsors you i was guys hoping keep... that we were going to be making some money in season two but uh you know it's early yet <laughs> it is early folks by the way here's our here's our uh, we have a very special guest today to kick off the second season we have he's going to give you guys some good advice this is mark santangelo from marson associates in emerson he's going to be joining us today he's going to hook you guys up with some knowledge on investing accounting everything you need to do and need to know when it comes to starting a small business, maintaining a small business, all that stuff. But first, we kind of want to just welcome everyone back. We took a little bit of a break between season one and season two. Um, Who's it was, everyone? It was well deserved. Who's everyone? You know, the twelve people that <laughs> the twelve people that are subscribed. Yeah. Listen, we do this for you guys. The the dirty dozen. <laughs> we do we do it for ourselves. <laughs> This is this is the man's version of therapy. There it is. In 2024, yeah. we don't go to therapy. We just just kind of BSing into a microphone. Hey, <laughs> amen to that. <laughs> Here, pull it, pull it a little bit closer to. There you. we go. How's yeah. that? Better. You okay. can yeah. you can bend it like backwards and fo there you go. Okay. Bend it like Beckham. Um, no, listen. We had a great, great, enjoyable season last year. We had some really awesome guests, and we're hoping to continue that uh, because there's a lot of awesome businesses and entrepreneurs around in this area. Listen, Bergen County's to me, people say New York is the hub. I don't know. Well, everybody Bergen from New York County. is moving to Jersey, yeah, especially to our area. So yeah. we're really the hub. And even if you work in New York, most people from our area, from Bergen County, are doing the commuting back and forth. You know, you don't... It's most the bedroom to New York. There's yeah, no doubt about exactly. it. Right. It's the bedroom. <laughs> yeah. It's, so. it, I mean, we got... Bergen County's got their own magazine, which is professionally done with a with, you know, Talking about two hundred one two hundred one magazine. Yeah, that's right. Bergen Mag and two hundred one, yeah, all that Absolutely. stuff. I mean, listen, we the sky's the limit around here for people who want to get on. So if I just want to remind you guys, if you're interested in getting on the show, if you're a small business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're in some really cool industry that we haven't interviewed yet, go to courtsplumbing.com. Click the application for the podcast and fill that out. Apply to be a guest, and we'll get you guys on. It's a lot of fun. We hang out. We kind of just BS and talk about your industry. But the point, the reason we started doing this was there's a huge gap, a huge age gap coming into the trades, and it's starting to get scary. I think the stat was for every, let's just take plumbing, for instance. For every eight plumbers that die, only die or retire. Yeah, let's just say leave the Okay, trade. leave the industry. <laughs> leave the industry. For every o 70 of you that die, <laughs> only, only one only of us takes one, your place. Only one comes up. And it's not that much different for the other trades either, I don't no. think. No, I, I, I think most industries, accounting accounting and tax industries, got the same problem. Really? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it, 
<clears throat> our, our National Trade Association, <clears throat> AICPA, American Institute of CPAs, there's been a downward trend for the last 15, 20 years of graduates uh, coming out of college with a degree in accounting. Sorry. And a lot of it is because they went to a 150-hour program. So normal graduate for four years comes out with 120 credits. Now you got to have 150. So basically it's a master's degree. And then you sit for this 20-hour exam over three and a half days, and you bang your head against oh the God, wall, and it's hours? got a 70% fail rate. Now, I took this exam longer than I care to mention on air, and it still has a 70% fail rate. Yep. Really? You know? So yeah. there's got to be a problem. There's got to be an issue with it's, the schooling. It, there's a the lot teaching. of technical information that they test you on, yeah. and it's growing more and more because of the introduction of cybersecurity right. and, and cryptocurrency and, and international standards. And when you become a CPA, the, the assumption is not that you're just going to be only dealing with U.S. companies or only dealing with people in New Jersey. It, it, you could take that license anywhere in the world. Yeah. So you've got to oh, know, know all of this, all of these aspects. Now, practically, as you move along, you create niches. Yeah. And right. there's things you don't do. But at the exam time, the assumption is you're going to handle everything. Yep. So you are tested on everything. You know, they did that with the plumbing test when my uncle got licensed in the mid-90s. It was totally different than what it is today. They added a lot of business questions to the test because they were licensing guys, and then they would go out, and they had no idea how to run a business. Right. And even now, a lot of guys get out there, they don't know. It's, the you know, they it's wanna... complicated. It's changing dramatically. Case in point, we'll talk about this as we get into it. What do you need to know? I had a client call me up. She said, I want to start my LLC. I said, great. She said, I went online and I set it up. I said, okay. Did you get a federal tax ID number? No. Do I need one? Yes, you do. You don't want to give out your social security all the, number all the time. Right. Okay, great. So how do I do that? And I gave her some, some tips on how to do that. And I said, but more importantly, there's a new law that went into effect on January 1, 2024, and it snuck up on everybody. Yes, we it need was, to talk about this. Okay, it's called beneficial ownership interest. And that particular law requires you to register your company and who owns the company with a, a certain department of the Treasury called Financial Crimes Unit or FinCEN for transparency purposes. Well, if you were in existence before January 1st, you've got till next January. But if you set a new business up after January 1, you've got 90 days. And and most people have no idea no about this clue. thing. No <clears throat> clue at all. They only just came out with the form after January 1. They only opened up the online ability to file after January 1. Okay? But the it's huge. Um, $500 a day if you don't meet the 90 day or, or, or you don't file on time. And then there's even imprisonment. Like okay. That. We talked about this. I don't know if you remember. I, I, t I pulled out a couple articles. We talked about it where the exemption is for businesses that make anyone who makes over 5 million with Correct. 20 employees, you're exempt. That's right. And, and certain industries yeah. like banking and insurance, accounting firms, financial yeah. service companies are nonprofits. Certain nonprofits are exempt. But so the little guy's on the hook. No, they're going right after the small and medium business. They're using the, the, the excuse that we need more transparency. We're worried about, and they tied it into the Patriot Act, we're worried about people sending money to terrorists. How yeah. many small businesses have the money to send yeah. overseas to terrorism, right? Okay. Our government sends money to terrorists. I don't want to go down that road, but yeah. I agree with you. And, and that's the problem that we have. So now there's this added burden, right? Who's going to do the filing? Well, there's liability issues, okay? Oh, if you screw it up? There's liability. For example, the AICPA comes out and says, I have a responsibility to tell my clients that this exists. And if I don't and they don't file, I could be liable. What? Mm. Okay? Are you serious? So now we got to do, and we're going to do, a major email blast. So yeah. there's something in paper, something that proves that every business owner who's a client of ours is going to get an email that says, BOI, be aware of it, yep. right? And you've got till the January of 2025 to file, 
And if you want to do it, you could do it online. But if you don't want to do it and you want us to do it, there's an additional charge. Yeah. Why? I went online already. And it took me some time to do it. And you have to upload current driver's license or a passport for the owner. So let's talk about Cords Plumbing. If I go online and register Cords, which will have to get done, yeah. right? the owners of Cords has to register with their social security number and a copy of a driver's license or a passport. It's a one-time event unless there's changes to ownership. Okay. And you've got till January of 2025 to do it. And if you don't, $500 a day penalty. A day. $500 a day. A day. I don't, know, I don't know why our government despises small business so much. It's the backbone of the economy. 85% of the people in this country are employed by small and medium businesses. Mm -hmm. That's how you build wealth. And 85% of well, the revenue of generated is from small and medium-sized businesses. That's how you build the middle class. Of course it is. That's, That's how you maintain right. the middle exactly. class, yeah. Yeah. which is slowly eroding yeah. right now. Right Absolutely. in front of our eyes. Yes, it I is. I think a lot of this stuff has not even caught up. We oh, I thought you were trying to get my attention. No. <laughs> I need a table for myself over here for my drink. Just because you, yeah, you like yeah, to go to that. Side. Yeah, right. Around, Don't you, you have siblings. You didn't learn to share. Around. I share all the time. I yeah, it everything. sounds like it. I share all the but time. But not as drinks. <laughs> yeah. No, don't touch my drink. <laughs> no, we have. I, we, we've talked about this tons, like plenty of times where it's, it's, you talk to any economist, small business is the engine that drives the economy. No doubt. It, it, allows people to move out of the poor class, move up into the middle class. It allows you financial movement and all that stuff. And for some reason, every time you turn around, you turn around to the to like a kick in the nuts from our own government. I know. And, it, you know, it's it's and it's we're already like do we look like we have money to send to terrorists? Like who's sending money? What small I, business? There, though, uh, listen, there are. There are. I mean, listen, my dad works down I've already said this. I've explained it. You down in Elizabeth, New Jersey, and and there's so many businesses that open up under false false licenses. That, that's exactly that launder that's money. Right. That's they, right. There's so many that we know, and that a lot of these people know, and and it's it's very obvious. But like people who give out licenses for for certain businesses, it's it's very clear what they're doing it for. They're doing it for laundering money. So I, I get that. I get the regulations. I understand that. But to, you, you're putting regulations on other small businesses that don't, that, that don't, that can't handle it, that don't need it, you know? And you're kind of putting this stress and this strain on small businesses that they're not supposed to have these stresses and strains. You're supposed to have the resources in the federal government to go after these guys. You're, you're so on point, Max, because the information that they ask – yeah. is already being asked by the IRS. And if you fill out the returns properly, mm -hmm. that information is there. So the first thing when I looked at it, now I'm in this business for a long time, and I said, well, why doesn't the Treasury just talk to the other arm of the Treasury, call the IRS, <laughs> and say, what do you have on the tax returns? Yeah. And if the, if, it's def in, if the information is deficient, send them a notice. Right. Yep. Go after them. Yeah. Right? But for all the rest of us who've already complied, now we're got another burdensome step to comply again. Yes, it's a one time. It's still a pain in the behind to deal with. And the information's already there. And if it's not, go chase them. Yeah. Exactly. It seems it just seems like a stepping stone to something else to me. Every time they come out with something, it, it's like a stepping well, stone. Well, it is more. because now it affects single member LLCs, multi member, C Corps, S Corps. Trusts, okay. Oh, wow. Trusts. So now the trustee who maybe has no financial interest in the trust, but he's got to do the right thing as the trustee. Their name and information now has to be shared because they operate the trust or control the trust. Mm -hmm. It goes after people who buy LLCs for and don't want you to know that they own that property. Yeah, A lot yeah. of the stars do that, yeah. right? All of that transparency is now going to come out yeah. and and be shown. Yep. So it has a, a far-reaching effect in addition to the burden of doing it. Yes, only once, but every time you if you bring a partner in, if it's an LLC, you change partners, you got to notify FinCEN. It's a change in ownership, 25% hmm. yeah. or more. So let me ask you this. So 
our our secretary Nancy, who answers the phone, she's an LLC. She's responsible for this separate of courts. If she self, if she registered through a state as a single member yeah. LLC, she's got to disclose. That's right. Now, so that's right. She doesn't have her own accountant. She doesn't have anyone showing her this stuff. How's she supposed to know? This is the problem. If it wasn't for the fact that we, you know, are tapped into various trade organizations and and get newsletters who would know the yeah. average person running a business may not be aware of yeah it. and you know who i feel the the most for is not people in our area because we have a ton of resources in our area you have every single resource in our area you have accountants very available you have all these different types of small businesses available you have all the different resources available, but when yeah. you get out to like middle America, you know, we took a trip to Appalachia, you know, with all these areas with these small businesses in the middle right. of nowhere, these people are not, they're, they're, they're not available. I, I, they're, they don't have the, the expertise. resources. Yeah, yes, they don't that's have correct. Those resources. They're just, they're trudging along they doing their work. Like you, you know, to just be like, listen, you need this. You need to do this. Otherwise you're going to get screwed. And, and, you know, the IRS or, or the federal government's going to come after you for these things. It's, it's clear nobody really thought about it. They really, you know, they only thought about the one side. They oh, didn't this is think half, about this, the logistics, which is the issues. Of yeah, the, of the which is more government. than that. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's the problem. You know here. what? Let's do, an inter let's do an official introduction oh, for you, Mark. Okay, great. Like I said before, Mark Santangelo. Mark is actually our accountant. He has been uh, Quartz Plumbing's accountant for a long time, over 20 years. Yeah, it's been a while. With Paul. Yep. Um, Marson Associates in Emerson, New Jersey. You guys are you guys are accounting and financial services for individuals, small business, medium business. Yes, all across the range. Yeah, we've all got right. a wide range of clients. Started in 1999 over there in Emerson. Yeah, look, he's already rubbing his eyes. The year, eyes the like year God. of the prince. Yeah, just so, so so many people, so so, so frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> How long have I been in this business? I can't even. Actually, longer than that. Ninety nines. We moved to Emerson. When you moved to Emerson, <laughs> yeah, we won't go far. How many far back? It's been a while. Let's leave it at that. And then you have, what would you call it? A sister company? Maybe we have an affiliate called Titan Financial Services. Um, we clear through Fidelity Investments, and um, we handle all of the financial. Uh, uh, products, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, uh, life insurance, annuities, um, and um, we create and manage portfolios of all sizes. I'm going to tell you, because your perspective is probably one of the most important to me, because first of all, it's like another language to me. It is. It is a totally other language. You don't learn this stuff in school. You don't even learn basic economics in school. And then... You know, someone who comes out of high school or college with an entrepreneurial spirit has no clue where to start. So your perspective, first of all, accounting is one no, of the most important things. You love it or hate things. it, man. You love it or hate <laughs> it, but it's the lifeblood of every business. Yeah, yeah. It's a, that's what I was going to say. It's the lifeblood of every every single business. That's right. I, I always think of that scene in Wolf of Wall Street where Matthew McConaughey is sitting down with Leonardo DiCaprio and he's just going numbers high digits e -e -e -e, high frequencies yep. this super stressful stuff that you know if you're looking at a computer screen all day which i'm sure you are i am i've seen your setup in your office and yeah. at your house and you I'm have just three like, of them oh my yeah. god <laughs> like if i'm Everywhere just look looking at computer. this screen you and, and a friend of mine who used to work for a real estate company doing the accounting for a real estate company i'm just like if i was looking at that screen all day i would lose my mind it just happens numbers there all are days day long where you feel like you've lost your mind. No doubt about it. Yeah. And it yeah, but, increases a lot between January and April 15th. But it's yeah. worth it. I mean, I've oh, been, I've been look, to your house. I've been doing it long enough. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love what I do. Um, you know, and when it's not fun anymore is when I'm going to stop. Who knows? Hopefully, yeah. if I do it right, I'll be dead. Wow. You know. Listen, I've met a lot of accountants, and they have toast personality. Like a piece of cardboard. Yeah, I know. I don't hang out with accounts. Yeah, you're a lot of fun. <laughs> every time we go, every time we go over to Mark's, Mark, in that building, you have a, there's a bunch of other businesses. There's he, always plumbing work. He's to do. always more interested in what we're doing yeah. than what's actually. Well, it's going. a different language, <laughs> yeah. right? It's a different language for me. Yeah, you know. No, I. The whole financial system to me, I would love to learn it, but it's a totally. It's a totally other world. You know, I I grew up with with two blue collar parents. My my mom and dad didn't go to college you know my mom sewed in a factory forever 
Okay. And wow. yeah. What are you, by the way? What's your background? In terms of uh, nationality. Oh, I'm Italian American. Yeah. So, well, okay. Italian no, American. So can be full Italian. Italian. Okay. No problem. <laughs> Um, grew no, up in Newark. The sewing makes sense. Yeah. Newark makes sense. Yep, yep. My mom sewed in a factory since she was 13 or 14 years old till wow. 70. Um, my dad got drafted out of high school back then for World War II. Um, came back and then finished his high school. How long was he over um, there for? Three years. And then oh, came wow. back. Uh, and then um, worked for Food Town Supermarkets. For Food his, Town. Food Town. Holy for cow. his whole life, you know, and um, was a handy guy. And my uncles were painters or masons, so I learned some craft, yeah. you know, and um, I, I know enough to be dangerous and I know enough not to touch <laughs> things. I know I don't touch electrical because that could kill me, yeah. right? And I don't touch a lot of plumbing because that'll hurt me yeah. in a lot of ways. But I have an interest. I take an interest in it. Yep. Um, so that's why I'm always bugging you guys when right. you come in the office. Right. <laughs> I'm always watching what you're doing because um, I have an interest. So, um, you know, I get it, you know. Um, How'd you I, get into I, the numbers game then? It, oh, God. It, it, it was, it's convoluted. I went to college as a psychology major of all things. Everyone um, does, though. Because I wanted to go to law school. And oh, wow. I, I got done with my freshman year and I sat there and I said, this is not going to work. I'm going to need a psycho because I will be psycho by the time I get out of here. And I said, well, okay, let me try something else. I don't know what else to try. Maybe I'll try accounting. And I went to school that summer. Five days a week, four hours a day for 14 weeks, and it made no sense. I was banging my head against the wall. I debit credit asset liability made no sense and i just kept plugging and plugging and plugging and then the light went on and i said oh okay i get it now all right i was able to catch up with those that were accounting majors their first year went into my sophomore year and sophomore year was the meat of the accounting exam that's intermediate one and two okay that's like 50 percent of the cpa exam and i just loved it i was a nerd i loved it I absolutely loved it. If there were four homework problems and there were 10 in a book, I did all 10. Huh. I really liked doing it. I got out in three and a half years, took the CPA exam, came back, graduated college, found out I passed three out of four parts, went back, passed the fourth part, got licensed, been doing it ever since. Went back to grad school, um, got my MBA in, ta- in finance and tax, and then Moved along, started doing some things. I worked for an international accounting firm for, oh, God, 12, 13 years. And then opportunity came to start my own firm, and I did. And then a few years after that, I got licensed as a full Series 7 uh, uh, stockbroker license and uh, started Titan and then just started building from there. And look back, and it's a couple of hundred years went by. (laughs) So Titan started before Marsan. No, Marsan started... Right out the door. Gotcha, okay. And then Titan started maybe 10 years later. Um, I was tired of developing plans and then having them destroyed by the stockbrokers who were just pushing stocks. Yeah. And the clients would say, well, that's not what we decided on. And I called a broker, and the broker's like, well, I only make money when I buy and sell. So I said, oh, okay. So I said, well, all right. I took the exam, and instead of being a registered rep, which is what a stockbroker is, it became a registered investment advisor which the credo is do the right thing yeah okay put the client first you have a fiduciary responsibility and that kind of sat more in line with being a cpa because that's how that is okay you have a fiduciary responsibility in effect to do the right thing somebody gives you their money they they, they trust you with their money yeah that's all, and and you know and I tell people, it don't matter whether it's 5000 or 50000 or 500000 It may be all the money in the world to you, and that's yeah. all that matters. Yeah. yeah. You know? Um, and, and that's the way I, I always took that position. You do the right thing. Yeah. You love what you do. The money will come. The right. clients will come. I got to be honest. I think you would have made a fantastic lawyer. I really do. <clears throat> I think you would have killed it. <laughs> 
thank you. Well, we appreciate that. <laughs> Listen, he's got. The, I think you have the personality of of I. You would have probably done well in whatever profession you took because if you hated this as much as you did in your first year, and you kept on with it, it means that you have that yeah. like that that personality of uh, this is not going to beat me. Right. I'm going to do this. I, right. Yeah. You know? I, right. So <laughs> I wish I had that. You know. There's this video going around the internet with this little baby trying to like put a block into this little toy and she can't get it and she can't get it four times later. She just tosses it and throws it away and moves on to something else. That's me. Well, I forget it. Uh, luckily, plumbing, I was able to figure out pretty early. <laughs> That's good, man. That's good. <laughs> right, people were going to McDonald's or something. <laughs> but, I mean, listen. So, actually, I want to touch base Okay. on... So, like I said before we, when we did the intro, this show is geared toward people coming up into small business, okay. trying to in, trying to introduce people into the trades or any type of industry that's on here. Sure. Let's start at the beginning with someone okay. who wants to open, let's let's just say a plumbing company. Yeah. Just for any just, business. It really doesn't matter. Okay. Right? The first thing you do is you say, okay, I'm licensed. Whether it's electrician, plumber, mason, carpenter, it doesn't matter. Dentist. What type of business do I want to be in the entity? Okay. And there's so many, right? We have a single member LLC. It's the old sole proprietor, unincorporated, that I don't want to leave my personal assets out there. God forbid I get sued. None of these entities will protect you from negligence. Let's be really straight up and okay. clear on that. If you screw up, can I say that? I did. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> you're looking you at screw up, ups, you're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> we, we, we got the three stooges tonight. <laughs> if, if you mess up, and it's negligence, you're going to get sued. Yeah. There's nothing going to protect you. You better have insurance. Yeah. Bottom line. After that, there's other risk areas where you want to protect your personal assets. And there's single-member LLC. There's a multi-member LLC, two or more people. There's an S-Corp. There's a C-Corp. Okay, those are the four biggest type of entities around that people look at. A multi-member LLC would be multiple owners? Yes. Okay. It would be the two of you together. It would be a, the old days. It would be a partnership. Now you form an LLC instead. Okay? Nobody uses general partnerships anymore because your personal assets are at risk. Yeah. So you form an LLC, and it's gotcha. multi-member. If you're by yourself, it's a single member. Okay? Um, the advantage is there. One, you don't have your social security number flying around. You get an ID number. These okay. are advantages of a single? Of all of them. Okay. Okay. From a tax perspective, they're pretty much equal in terms of what can I write off. The complexity increases. If somebody comes to me and says, I'm not sure if I want to do this, I want to try this, I tell them, get a single member LLC lined up. Easy to start, low cost. Easy to liquidate if it doesn't work out for you. If you say, well, okay, I'm growing. This is good. I want to start bringing in employees. I want to start bringing in maybe a partner. Now you're looking at growing to either a multi-member LLC or an S-Corp or a C-Corp. The S-Corp and the multi-member LLCs, whatever the profit or loss is, it goes on your personal return. The entity itself pays no tax. Okay. Okay. It's called a flow through. A C Corp is a separate legal entity that pays its own tax. So it has a disadvantage because it has two layers of tax. Make a really simple example. I make $1,000 profit and there's $1,000 in the bank. I now want to take that $1,000 out as an as a S Corp and as a single member or multi-member LLC I've already paid the tax on that thousand because it came to my personal return. Taking that thousand out doesn't cost me anything. In a C Corp, I make a thousand dollars profit. The C Corp pays the tax. Maybe there's only nine hundred left. And now, if I want to take that nine that nine hundred out, I pay a second level of tax as the dividend or a distribution to me as the shareholder. What's the benefits of that? Well, the old days, C Corps were used primarily. For two major areas, publicly held companies, they're all C-Corps. Okay. Okay, because there's a limit to how many shareholders you could have in an S-Corp. So by definition, a publicly held company is a C-Corp. Yeah, okay. okay. I gotcha. Um, and most of them were manufacturing. General Motors, mm -hmm. Chrysler, 
I you gotcha. know, J.P. Morgan Chase. They're all C corps, <clears throat> manufacturing, banking. Merrill Lynch was a corp. It's an old style. It has great protections. The law is long. The law is clear in a lot of circumstances on protecting. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of them go to Delaware because Delaware is where the corporate law is avant garde. Okay. <clears throat> Delaware, a, a lot with Delaware is like that. Delaware is where a lot of big companies own their business. Yes. Open their like headquarters. Of yes. The, they don't manufacture, run nope, out of there. Nope, that's where their corporate headquarters corporate, is because yeah. if they get sued or they, or they have an issue, they want to use the Delaware courts for that decision process. It's crazy how that works. And, and that works great if you're a publicly held company. If you're not a publicly held company, right, there's less of a reason to be a C Corp. Okay. okay. You may become an S Corp. Can't have more than 100 shareholders. Can't have foreign investors in your S Corp. Okay. They're not allowed. Certain trusts are permitted. In a state, if a shareholder dies, the estate could be a shareholder for a couple of years, and then it has to be moved out to a, another shareholder and or, and or it could be moved to a, a qualified trust. So there's limitations to ownerships, okay? Uh, LLCs can't own S-Corps. Gotcha. Okay, but an LLC can own a C-Corp. C-Corp, you can have anybody, now U.S., foreign national, <laughs> trust, the states, and there's no limit. I'm pretending so, to understand. So I don't know. He lost me here. <laughs> okay. Right here is right. Okay. <laughs> Those are the How do we dumb this down for okay. blue guy? <laughs> okay. I'm just, and maybe I went a little crazy, and I admit that. Um, a I, little. What we do is we suggest, if you don't know. Why is there S and why is there C? What is? <laughs> I fixed the toilet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what does the S stand for? What yeah. does C stand for? I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I, I have no idea. No, it's, the, it's, the, it's the section of the code, the IRS code. Um, so it's really subchapter S Corp because it's referring to the subchapter S of the Internal Revenue Code, which you know is thousands of pages and makes no sense. Right, sometimes. right, right. Um, normally, we, we, we look at we say, okay, open up an LLC. If you're married, go with a multi-member because multi-member LLCs have a little bit more history in the courts than single members do. Okay. Okay. So if you have a spouse or someone you trust, you can put them on for 1%, okay, do a 99 to 1, but you get a little bit more stronger shield. Is that what you would suggest for someone just coming up? Someone coming up, I would say start out. If you're single... Go or the single member LLC. Yeah. If you're not sure about what you want to do, like the person I spoke to today, I want to sell on eBay. I want to sell on yeah. Amazon. Well, you know, that's like a rocket. It shoots up and it right. can burn out right. for you. Go with a single member, right? Easy, low cost to start up, easy to dissolve. If you've got a license and you want to get into the business and you know that you, you've got the ability to do it, doesn't always mean you'll be successful. You've got to check with your licensing bureau because certain licensing boards only allow the people to own the business who have the license. For example, in an accounting firm, as long as 51% is owned by CPAs, the other 49% doesn't. Okay. In a law firm, they all got to be attorneys. Why? Because that's what the board says. Okay. Well, that's the same thing with Quartz Plumbing almost. Like- well, Quartz is a C-Corp. Yeah. Right. Because I can't... Paul's... We, we were talking about Paul maybe taking me on as a partner, but I, I'm not licensed. Oh, okay. So it wouldn't, so, said yeah. it wouldn't work. It, it's a problem. Unless that's just a story he's you know blowing you can, smoke up my you, rear Yeah, check with the local board down in Halsey Street in Newark for everybody in Jersey. And there's a board of consumer affairs has all the licensing. You just look up P for plumbing, pick up the phone, yeah. and ask a question. And they're great. They'll tell you. You know, can a non- licensed person own an interest in a plumbing they may say yeah sure no no problem or no or only 49 percent. but you, you know that's the rules gotcha okay yeah. um <clears throat> so yeah we usually and i i don't think it's a problem for plumbers because we've got we've got several plumbers other than cords and their wives are part owner okay. of the business yeah yeah okay electricians too you got to trust your wife though 
Well, that's another you gotta, topic you for another your day. You're absolutely right. Well, <laughs> right. You guys are not married. I am, so I know the drill. <laughs> and she might be listening to this at some point in time. Yeah. She owns of half of everything that I do. It's I don't even care. It's <laughs> that's what made her happy. As I'm telling you, man, this stuff is this stuff is super important because, it like is. I said, we we go to we go we're we're still in school right now. Okay, the, and the school's maxed out. Thankfully, there's a ton of guys going for their license right now. A couple of years ago, there weren't. The schools were empty. Yeah, but most of them, are, most of them are older guys. That's the, that's. I think that's the bigger issue. I'm actually the oldest guy. No, no, oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think you're the oldest guy. There's a lot of guys. Is that, that are, is that a factor in terms of when you take the exam? How many people are going for it? No, no, it's just the fact that a lot of people haven't been going into plumbing. And a lot of guys that go in, they're union. And they just they're just going to get a pay bump. Oh, the, the journeyman. So like they're not they're, they're not going to get their license to start a business. They're going to get. A but they pay need bump that master in, license in order yeah. to get a bump. Not even. They just want the journeyman. So what a journeyman is is you go to your, you go to school, you bang out your four years. Okay. At the end of that four years, you become a journeyman. A journeyman until you get your license. So you can be a journeyman, never get your license for the right. rest, yeah, for rest and of just your stay life. a journeyman. But you get that, but you get that pay increase because you went to the school. Sure, you know? sure. So, so what? I, it could be even half of the guys that were going to school that are even going to try to get their license. So how yeah. far through are you guys? This is this is my last semester. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then you'll sit for I'm, the exam, and I'll yeah. sit for the exam. I'm like half a semester behind him. Oh, okay. So you yeah, guys so. are close to the end. Yeah. One I still don't the see other. the light. I still don't <laughs> see the freaking light. Could be a train coming at you, too. <laughs> Who knows? I still, I've had a few of those. Listen, with all these freaking bills coming out, I don't know. Like, I'm so nervous. But like, yeah, I have but, well, I have a lot of, we, we, you know, we talk to a lot of guys in school, and they're getting into this business because they're mechanically inclined. Yes, that's they're good with their hands, so to speak. That's what their strength well, is, not lo- this stuff. A lot of them yeah. don't want to own their own businesses because I think of the headaches. You're talking the about nightmare, exactly. of course. The headaches. Sure. And, and, and it's, it's discouraging no. out there for people to have their own businesses. Not like it was when, I guess, you were growing up and, and people like you could... you can. It get was a, always a paperwork you, problem. You, it really was. Yeah, but you can open the phone book and, and call a plumber like like it was nothing. It was like yeah. picking, you know, you know, it was shooting fish in a barrel. You can call right. any plumber. If this guy couldn't get to you today, right. this guy could get to you today. Right. Now it's... it's everyone's it's, waiting. Everyone's waiting. That's Everyone. a good thing for you guys. It is. It is a good thing, but it's also... There are some good things going on today, but I'll tell you, there's a lot of stuff that is not. Manufacturing is a nightmare. And I think we talked about it when I was putting in that toilet. You said you knew a guy. The third or fourth version of that toilet? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, Don't not even go get there. Nobody started. makes is that it in now? It is in now. It is in now. It's in, now. It's okay. in, yes, it's in and yeah. up and okay. running. Yeah. But you had told me you knew a guy who was in manufacturing who moved his yes. factory down to Mexico. He did. Yeah, they made... I forgot what they made. It doesn't really matter, but they were... They kept, they had an engineering department and they had a manufacturing and they relocated relocated the entire manufacturing to south of the border. Yeah, and they kept all their engineering in the United States. And we were talking, we we're looking down, looking at the financials, and I said, "Gee, you know your your defect rate in your manufacturing shot up from virtually nothing to twenty yeah. percent." And his response was. Yeah, but it cost me nothing to make. Yeah, I'm saying. And I looked at him, and he's like, "It doesn't matter because even with the defect rate, I'm still making more money because the manufacturing, the engineering stayed in the states. Yep, but the manufacturing in the south. They they calculate their losses to to their yeah to their manufacturing costs, and that's right. Like I don't I don't they're not losing at all. I don't care if I'm if manufacturing is like what you said twenty 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 five percent. It, it, 25% of the of them are bad. One in five. I'm still, yeah, that's insane. Right. It goes back that's in. That's insane. Yeah, I know. But it's still, it was still cost effective and profitable, more importantly, yeah. for I'm them to do you. that. That's, I, you can't beat that. And you I want to speak to the people right now. <laughs> I want to speak directly to the people. Zoom in. Zoom in. There it is. We're good plumbers. <laughs> Most of the guys are good plumbers. But our failing, our, our failures are in. The, parts. the manufacturing. Yeah, the parts. I can't the parts. Tell you. Let me tell let me let's run down the fall real quick. Okay, let's go through this past freaking fall. Hold on. First of all, sump pumps. Sump pumps. It doesn't matter what brand you're getting. Mm-hmm. Garbage. Getting we had now. Yeah. We had You got a mangry. We put in a sump pump one out of four in one month. We one of them failed. was a name brand. That night failed, flooded out this guy's finished basement. We're stuck 
do it. You, you and I talked about insurance. that. In fact, we we can't name the brand, but I was surprised because it was a long-standing, well yeah. well-established yeah. company. That's what I'm saying. Like it's it's. We've yep. had we've put in boilers, and in the and a week later the controls fail. Yep. The low water cutoffs fail. What else? Oh, get this faucets, water, water monitors, monitors, faucets, all those showers. leak detectors. Yeah. I don't want to say the brands Can't again. Can't say it. We'll get sued. But leak detectors who advertise themselves as ah, you put in this leak detection system, you'll mm -hmm. never have to worry. You can shut off from your phone. Fail within a year. You know we what's had to crazy? Pull, we had to pull out that impeller. We did. There and was... then after we pulled the impeller out, it failed again. Yeah. yeah. After we put the new impeller in. Oh, the, yeah, the whole thing kind of. And just then broke I apart. went to turn it off, and the water was coming out of the turn off. We, I had to unplug it because I was worried that well, you know water and electricity don't mix. I'm telling we you, we had people, a like, brand. I would just want to say this: we had a brand that we put in that's a very reliable pump. It's a heat pump, okay? Yeah. Moves water through a heat system. We put it in two separate pumps into a woman's house. We bought two boilers two that boilers come with the pump. That come with the pump. The, the serial pump, numbers were and very close. Name brands, great pump. Usually, okay, both pumps failed flooded out this lady's basement and in a way they didn't just fail it, they, they didn't just fail they had a pinhole in the casting. It was a manufacturing defect they had a pinhole in the casting that pinhole sprouted in the back of the of the pump so it wasn't it imminently no, noticeable no no and it just it flooded out this woman's basement one one pump went three months later the other the pump other went. one went okay so we take it back to the supply house that we bought it from. They go, well, we don't know what to do with this. We've never heard of anything like this. Oh, yeah. I had a guy. There was a guy who came in maybe two months later. He showed the supply house owner. Same the, exact the spot. Supply house manager, same wow. exact thing. Same exact spot. And he spot. goes, listen, what the hell is this? Like, I just bought this pump, and it flooded out this lady's basement with a pinhole that came out of the back of the casting. And I was like... I had the same thing. And we have no recourse. It would have been interesting to see what the serial number was. I bet you the whole lot was mal. That's the thing. Yeah. But like you put a you put you put a yeah. solid piece of metal. I know. Into somebody's home and you're like, we have steel this pipe. Be fine. Yeah. We have it should steel, be. We have steel pipe. When you screw it, when you when you thread steel pipe into a fitting, the fitting will just snap. Well, I put in a, the radiator. We ordered a radiator, a cast iron radiator. Oh sure. Okay. I put in the plug at the top. Couple turns. Snaps, snaps right down the fin, and the lady was standing right there. She goes, "What was that?" I was like, "That was your radiator, just you know, breaking." Like, what? How are people supposed to have faith in us? I know that's the problem because you're the front line. I, exactly, you're the front line. But there's no recourse for us. No, except you to go them, back to the man, go back to your supplier and say, "Give me another one." Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we got off topic. But yeah, we did. You know, but what? anyhow, let's go back. Let's do this. Actually, we're at, we're kind of at the break point. Okay. We gave you guys a couple things when when you get into small business. Getting heated. That's what you want to do. Need to take a break. I'm getting we heated. gave you some options about how you want to file your you know you know get in start your business and stuff. When we pick it up, let's kind of go maintaining the business retirement. Sure. Yeah, let's talk, talk about, about that. that. Very important. It goes by fast, folks. Thanks for sticking with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Quartz Plumbing and Heating for top-rated service in Bergen County, New Jersey. And don't forget to keep treats for Frankie on hand. Marson Associates of Emerson. Blending a personal touch with financial expertise. Whether you're in our office beginning to build your financial future, or accessing our convenient online client portal, Marson's professionalism is of utmost importance. Visit us online at marsoncpa.com or contact us by phone at 201-599-2235. We look forward to maximizing the potential of your future. Okay. Ladies 
and gentlemen, welcome back to Plum Bums Podcast, the Blue Collar Tradesman Show, where we talk about small business and entrepreneurship in these crazy times of 2024, the new millennia. We're here. Can you believe? Yeah, I'm drinking because we're here. I'm drinking because I don't get it. I don't understand it. Right, Schmookies? I'm just going to give him my money one day and just be like, just do whatever you want with it. I don't, I don't understand it. Just... No, folks, thanks for sticking with us. We are here with uh, Mark Santangelo of Marson Associates, accountant to the stars, <laughs> right? Wow, <laughs> sounds good to me. I'm in. I'm in. Accountant to the stars and the mob, I hear. No, 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 no. Uh, but, We're clean. Uh, listen, I'm so glad you came. I really am. Me too. This is super important stuff, especially to the smucks trying to get into the blue collar trades and stuff. Anybody getting yeah. into any business. Well, this, this is this is what I wanted new to ask language. you. New language. Sure. I wanted to ask you. I want I always bring this up on every podcast because I am the younger generation. What are the what are the incentives? What are the rules to get the younger generation financially stable? I guess we talked about kind of readiment for retirement because we don't think about retirement. I don't think about retirement. I just Well, we think- don't want to jump ahead to retirement yet. How do you how do you once <laughs> once you once you pick you don't know the rules of the road. <laughs> once you once you figure out where you're at, we talked Step about back, youngster. <laughs> the the LLC, the the multi LLC. You've picked your business entity. How about maintenance? Okay. How does that work? How, sure. You know what what are we what are we in for about maintaining sure. your business, making sure everything's on point every year, year after year. Well, that's where you have good set of advisors, and and it should be a team. Um, you know, we work with. Anyone's attorney, we have a, a cadre of law firms that we work with of all sizes that can provide you know, legal expertise when necessary. Um, of course, through our affiliate Titan Financial Services, we provide the financial expertise as well as the accounting and tax um, expertise. And that team is what you need to work with. Um, we've got people who use QuickBooks, Excel. We have some that bring us the check stubs and the bank statements. And say, you know, I, I don't want to spend any time handling the accounting. That's what you guys do. And, and we're open to that. It doesn't matter to us, okay? The key is getting the information to us timely so that we could sit down with you throughout the year. We can help you with an issue. We can plan. Our guys call us. I'm thinking of buying a truck. Do you think I should lease or, or buy? We'll run through the number side and then the non-number side. Okay, it may sound great to do a lease, and then when you start talking about how many miles you're putting on the rig, right. <laughs> it doesn't make economic sense. Yeah. Okay, buying makes better sense. Um, my truck is 10 years old. It's been starting to really put money into it. Do I continue to pour money into it, or do I sell it or go get another one? You know, those kinds of things. You'll sit, sit down and talk to guys absolutely about Absolutely, all the time. We just had a couple of guys that are electricians Decided to, you know, do I buy? Do I not buy? And, you know, uh, they just bought a new Ford Transit and decided that this is the last repair they're putting in the old rig. They're going to keep the old rig, but that's the last repair. After that, if there's something major blows, it's Junkyard City for the, mm-hmm. for the, for the rig. Um, we do that. We've had that conversation with all of our trades guys. Um, there's incentives. There's tax incentives. There's write-offs. Um, none of the guys that are in the trades – have come to me with electric vehicles. I don't think they're oh, ready no for that, for the, for, for the demand that you put on the vehicle. Um, so that's not a factor. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, equipment purchases, we talk about buying and leasing all the time. And, and guys will stop in, sit down. That's what you want. You want that open wow. communication. If you come to me in January, I can't help you with last right. year. The year's over. But if I see you a couple times during the year, even if it's for 10 minutes to drop your stuff off, yeah. hey, I got a question. Yep. Not a problem. I can help you. I can prevent a mistake. Otherwise, I'm just cleaning yep. up afterwards. Yep. So you're just your advisor, your counselor. We're a lot of hats. A lot of hats. It's worth <laughs> it's worth the advice. I mean, listen. Sometimes, again, in these trades, in these professions, in small business, it's not when you when you think kind of like what I told you when you're just like pressured and backed into a corner like let's say buying a truck when you're backed into a corner for buying a truck let's say those guys who who needed to buy a new truck and and the truck is on the last leg you want to have the advice to know what i should do before the truck is done 
before you're like out of commission with that truck. You and let's like, face it, the new trucks are are not cheap. No. no. You you no. you know you're not talking ten twenty thirty thousand. No. These trucks are well 50, north. 60, 70, and then you load dollars. it up the way you want. You want to yep. put your racking in. You want this. You these trucks it's get pricey. Big it's an investment. Bucks. Yes, it is. It's yes, not. It is. It's nothing to kind of go willy nilly about. Not at with, all with your finances. Because listen, especially our industry, it's a roller coaster throughout the year. Sure it is. You you come off a great winter and all of a sudden March boom drops right. off. Right. You know, not a lot of guys are prepped for that. Nope. You know? And every business has a cycle. Every business has a cycle. Yeah. It's just a matter of when your cycle is. And you get to know that. If you know that March and April are a slow time, then you got to stash some cash yeah. so you can get through the slow time. Mm -hmm. You know? Because you know you're burning it up when, when it's your season. Yeah. yeah. You know? So another thing that we talk about, you know, That's setting good. up a savings account with your checking account. Put some money aside. Make sure you pay your taxes. Um, you know, I'm a big believer in getting on a payroll and pay your taxes in small bites out of your paycheck. The money's hardly there or it goes fast when you got to come up with a big number for a quarterly payment. Mm -hmm. You're you know, talking about personal payments or the business payments? Both. Both. You know, paid um, in small increments versus big lump sum. At you the always end choke on a big bite versus a small bite, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. if, if you've got a flow through entity, the, they don't pay any tax. It's yeah, all coming all the to good, you. You get all the good flavors in a big bite. Yeah, though. sure you do. <laughs> sure you do. Absolutely you do. And then you can't. I like that analogy. And then that money's gone. It is 100%. And, and, and you can hear, you know. <laughs> Live fast, die young. Yeah. And try to leave a good corpse. Exactly. The rest so my uncle always said, corpse, I'm going to die yeah. young because I want to leave a good looking corpse. There it is. I'm, I'm going to have a closed casket. And you don't want, you don't want to get into a payment plan. Let's face it, the IRS um, do whatever they want. is an animal that you know has no soul and lives forever, right? Yeah. And the, the interest rate that they charge on um, <clears throat> installment arrangements where you can't pay your taxes in full, you, you can't make that money. Mm -hmm. They're getting 10%, and mm -hmm. it compounds. Yep. So it's oh, ridiculous. Wow. You don't want to get in that hole. People get a debt that an honest man can't pay. Yeah. What is yeah. what does Ron Swanson say about the government? It's a it's a greedy pig that suckles at the taxpayers' teeth until <laughs> yeah. they have sore chap nipples. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll go with that. I like my version better, but he, okay. He loves parks and you know, rec. So. I'm a big but fan of parks and rec. We we were talking about, you know, maintenance. So we get clients that will come in with their QuickBooks, they'll come in with their Excel, they'll come in quarterly, monthly, once a year, like poor uh, uh, Quartz Plumbing does. They come in once a year. You know, but Paul will reach out if there's something that needs to be discussed. You know, if it's a truck or, or a major acquisition, we talk first. Um, so it doesn't really matter to me what method that you use to accumulate your data. It's the frequency that I see you mm -hmm. and we'll work with any accounting program. Um, you want a separate checking and you want a savings account in the business name, separate from your personal assets, commingling is a dirty word. To the IRS. Oh yeah, it's the it's got to be the worst thing. Absolutely, to do. Um, you know, and and that keeps you going. And then of course you sit down, you talk, you file your tax returns. We see you throughout the year. It's always an ongoing relationship. What we're saying is now you're starting to mature. Maybe you're taking on an assistant. Maybe the business is growing. Right. Maybe you're moving down the road and and you're going to get married or you're going to buy a house. There's a lot of things that come at you early in your life. Retirement just seems so far down the road, right? right? But it comes quick. Mm -hmm. It comes quick. So the next thing to start thinking about, and I don't care if you put small amounts in, it's the habit that you create. Yeah. Okay? Oh, that's it's a good the point. concept of putting something away, and it becomes part, it becomes another bill. Yeah, yeah. Okay? And that you have to provide for, that you build into your program as to how much revenue I need to generate this year. How many jobs do I need to get done? Because it's, it's, you look at it as another expense. It's a, yeah. it's a healthy way to look at it. And there are so many plans. We start out with very simple plans like SEP IRAs, which are really great for, for their, their low cost, low administration, easy to use, and they're good for one you know single person. You can move on to a solo 401k. What's the difference? A little bit more administration, but more contribution limits. Once you reach that level where you're starting to be fairly consistent in what 
yeah, I have ups and downs during the year, but I know I'm going to make X dollars. Yeah. You know, fairly consistent within a range. Then you move to, well, I want to put more away, right? So the SEP limit, the, the SEP IRA has a lower limit than, let's say, a solo 401k. So you move to a, 40, a solo 401k. Um, if you start to bring in employees, then you go to a regular 401k. And you could add a profit sharing plan. They all cap out at around $69,000 is the most you could put away in a plan. But that's a lot of money. Per yeah. person. Per person. You start putting that away every year, 10000 a year. It's the power of compounding, okay? The, the, the younger you are, the more consistent you are putting it away, even getting reasonable market returns. We don't have to get crazy numbers. Yeah. The numbers that it grows to when you're ready to retire are phenomenal. Phenomenal. What's yeah. the what's the like the goal age to start doing that, or is as, it just as ASAP? soon as you can? The problem is you don't know. I mean, you know, I graduated college, took the CPA exam, I had all this financial knowledge. I started out working for an international company. They just started four hundred one ks. That's how far yeah. back I go, and it was like, wow, oh God, retirement is so far away. Do I really want to start putting money away? And how much do I want to put away? You know, and you put a few dollars away because it's the habit you want to form. Right, right. You know, and then you get used to it. And then, okay, I got a raise. Let me take my raise and put it in the 401k. I'm not used to living on it because we know what happens, right? You get a raise, you, you step up your spending yeah. to meet your raise. Yeah. But if you put it in the four, if you if you put it away, yes, my, my income didn't change, but I'm also putting more money away and I'm not feeling it because I didn't have it. You create that mentality, and you start building up, and the numbers start to climb. And then when you get your statement, you go, yeah, this is a good thing. This is a smart thing. Yeah. And the next thing you know, 40 years rip by. Your body's beat up. You're, you're done. Yeah. And Never. you got a nice number. Never. Never, he says. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, who am I kidding? Five years ago. <laughs> you know. when, when it comes to... Um, I'm just going to use our business as an example. Oh boy! And let's we say we let's say I have a third employee. It's, it's, you're re, you're really Jones and for Paul to put a plan in on. Huh? I'm a, dying. For I it. hope he watches got, this. <laughs> what is what? What would be the best best path to benefit the employer and the employee to offer your employees? Because you want to give your employees a reason to stay with you. Of course you do. Of course so, you do. As far. <laughs> For Max, it's just give him more beers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Very easy. It's I'll it. get paid Very in booze. Easy. Yep. <laughs> yep. But when you want to when you want to incentivize employees to stay with you, I, I feel retirement's a good way to do that. It sure is. The employee uh, the employer matching. All yeah, right. there's a safe harbor plan where the employer says whether you participate or not, I'm gonna put three percent away. So somebody making thirty or forty thousand dollars, the employer's putting away uh, uh, 3% Three. of that number, okay? So a couple thousand dollars. The employee can put away money themselves. Most of them don't at that level right? yeah. because they're, they need the money. Yeah. It's, it's reality, okay? Um, but sure. you're saying to the employee, I value you, Yeah. okay? And I want you to know that, and I'm planning for your future as well. So in a safe harbor plan, which is really nice because you don't have all this testing and all this administrative costs and burden, you put 3% of the pay in, and it gives the employee something because it didn't come out of their pocket. Right. It's a nice perk, you know. Does that count um, toward their income? No. Not at all? It's not in their income at all. Where do the so, taxes come from on that? There are no taxes. So it's let's tax say you're making $30,000. Right? Okay. And you put away 3% for this employee, right? The employee doesn't participate. The employer just put nine hundred dollars in a retirement account for that employee and got a tax deduction for yep. nine hundred dollars because yeah. it's a business expense. Yeah. Okay. Oh, a tax wow. deductible business expense. The employee doesn't pick up the income. They take the, the nine hundred dollars. It gets invested in we'll just say uh, index funds. Yeah. Keep it simple, and it grows. That's all tax deferred. Okay. When does the bell ring for me to pay the tax? When you retire and you pull the money out, you'll pay the tax as you go. Mm -hmm. And right now, you're not required to pull the money out until you're 73 years old. 
The law says if it hasn't doesn't change, that by 2030, the number is going to move to age 75. So you could defer it as long as you want. Most people will need the money. But the point is, during your working years, it's not income, and all the growth is not taxable till down the road. Okay. Where's mine? <laughs> Over there. <laughs> Go get it. <laughs> <laughs> Run toward the light. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean... That is Paul's in for it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> His ears are ringing. He got He's gonna me. knock on the door in a second and be like, "I feel something shady going on in my own shop." What the hell was Mark doing on the podcast? He yeah. gave way too yeah, much I'm information the guy who's to you hear. guys. <laughs> exactly. All right. I told you not to bring him on the podcast. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna go. You're gonna go to the office. That toilet we just put in is gonna be pulled out. That's <laughs> it. That's retribution. It. They're gonna blow up. <laughs> What do you think? Uh, so I've, I'm hearing actually a lot of conversations about moving the retirement age to 70. Is that a thing, or is that just something? No, being that's a deferment. Around? Well, yeah, it, it's possible. There, you can collect Social Security at age 62. 62. Okay, but you only get 80 percent of what your full benefit would be at your retirement age. Your full retirement age is based on your birth date. 65, 66, 67. So depending on when you were born, your retirement age may be 66 in 10 months, 67 in five months. Okay. What they're talking about is two different things. Do I take the money at 62? Well, if you've got longevity, obviously if you need the money, that's another factor. But assuming you don't, that you only get 80% of what you would get when you hit your full retirement age. So for someone like you, it's probably 67 years old. Yours is probably close to that, 66 and maybe 10 months. So Stick closer to the mic a little bit. Be careful. Okay. Yeah. Um, so whatever that number is, at 62, you get 80% of. If you wait to your full retirement age, you get your 100%. If you wait to 70, you get 132%. Really? It grows. Because the reward for waiting is it grows 8% a year up to 32%. Yeah, but who wants to work until 73? You don't have to work. You just don't collect. Yeah. But how are you How are you generating the, any income? Uh, until therein, rise the, therein lies the rub, right? You might have a pension plan from a 401k or an IRA. Okay. So you say, okay, maybe you bought a two-family house and you're collecting rents. A variety of factors. Yeah. Okay. The second conversation though is because they've borrowed so heavily from social security trust funds to pay for other government programs <laughs> that they need to fix social security okay so what they're saying is if they don't fix the problem by 2035 benefits will substantially be reduced there's a lot of fixes one of the fixes are is just increase the payroll tax, meaning that right now, if you make 160000 you pay Social Security on it. Anything over that, you only pay the Medicare tax. Right. Okay. We'll raise the taxable limit. Somebody making three, four $400,000, let them pay more into the Social Security system. Right? So a combination of raising the wage, the taxable wage, that's subject to Social Security is a fix. Okay? Um the other way to do it is stop borrowing against it for Medicare and Medicaid. Fund that another way. Yeah. You know, Believe it or not, they did a poll, and guys and gals making three, four, a million dollars a year don't have a problem paying more into Social Security. You would think they would, but they don't. Yeah. Right? I All think right. that's the easiest fix to administer. Yeah. Okay? Um Right now, when you retire, up to 85% of your Social Security is going to get taxed, depending on your income limit. So, you, you know, your, your wages are taxed, you're paying Social Security, then you retire, you take Social Security, and it gets taxed again. I mean, i got to be okay. honest. Most that, that's, that's messed up. Yeah. Well, the whole system seems to be messed Especially up. Especially for people who make less than, what did you say, uh, less than $160,000. Yeah, so cut him off. Yeah. <laughs> He's starting to stumble. <laughs> no, no, it's about to get real good. We don't yeah. want to cut him. <laughs> this is where it gets really good. I mean, no, I, I've already 160,000. There you go. So 
<laughs> I'm trying not to accentuate the lisp. There you are. See, I mean, I know most people my age and younger, Social Security to us is like, it's not even going to be there anyway. Like, it's, it's, it's like a non-factor to me. I'm not, it's not something I'm relying on. So in, in reality, me and him, we really got to w- figure out our own way to do it. That's the advice I give everybody because I don't count on Social Security. When I do my pl- financial planning for myself and for my clients, I, I count as Social Security as being the bonus. Yeah. And you got to remember the, groceries. the intent of Social Security when it was formed back in the 30s. It was to supplement retirement. Uh, Why did they pick 65? Because most people were dead by that point. So they had no concept that they would really be paying out. Unbelievable. And yes. That was the that what was a Ponzi scheme. It was a great deal. Okay. But it made sense. Most people would be dead. They'd pay into a system. And don't you know, historical, you can do a fact check. The first person to receive a check lived into her nineties. <laughs> so she blew that theory right out the door. <laughs> It was not a lot of money. It was five or six bucks a month. But the point was she lived well past 65. Yeah. Um, you know, and now that we're the population is living longer, it's a factor. Yeah. But remember, too, when Social Security came around, five people worked, one person collected. Right, right, now right. Now it's three right. people work for every two collecting. So the system's burdened down. Yeah. There's not enough of the population contributing yeah. to keep funding it. And then if you keep taking money out of the trust fund to pay for other programs, of course it's not going to sustain yeah, itself. Absolutely. It can't. Yeah. That's just pure mathematics. Or they could just print more money. Well, they do, but it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's the problem. You, well, you said something interesting. I've never heard anyone refer to a 401k as a pension plan. So that's basically what it is. Of course it is. It's a self-funded pension plan. Back in the day, you went to work for a major corporation. They put money away for you. Okay, and they told you that when you retire, you're going to get X dollars a month for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. In technical terms, that's a defined benefit plan. They know what the benefit is. Okay, they use actuaries. The actuaries compute your mortality, and they go back to the company and say, "Well, if this person works for the next 30 years, including raises, this is what they're going to make. This is the benefit they're going to get. This is what you have to fund." Okay, and they take into account market returns and all kinds of crazy, sophisticated calculations. Well, those plans become very expensive. That's why GM went down because the union uh, rate and the uh, bargain plans they couldn't make the contributions. Their pension liabilities were way above their pension assets, so they went down, wiped it out. A lot of companies closed the plans. You get a guy working thirty-five years, the plan shuts down, or the company shuts down, they get nothing. The pension guarantee company comes in, it's a governmental agency, and insures the plan. You don't always get 100% of what you were supposed to get. So one of the fixes were let the employee It's almost like an FDIC thing. It was an FDIC thing to a limit. Okay. Hey, FDIC only insures your accounts for the first two hundred and fifty thousand. Well, I, I I know more than I thought I did. Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty so pretty it is. Some questions that and it's I don't called, It's called the pension guarantee company. Okay. Okay. And they basically insure the plans. They pay large plans pay a percentage in, like a premium, so that the plans get funded, that the insurance gets funded. But again, when a plan goes down. You're not always getting a, you're getting a benefit, but not always what you were supposed to get. So what they moved was when these plans started to get very, very expensive and people don't stay 30 years in a company anymore, yeah. the 401k came into play. And, and that the, moves with you from company to company, 401k right? is you put away the money. Companies yeah. match. Why do they match? They match because they need a 70% participation rate. Okay. Oh, I didn't oh, know that. Oh, that's why they match. Of course. Okay. Is it also a tax deduction? Yes, but is? they're matching because in order to get the plan in, you got to have 70% participation. I didn't know that. So they match. I'll give you the first 100% of the first 6%. You've heard all those stories. Yeah. That's to get the participation high so that the plan can fly. Okay. But it saves them money. And I'm okay. not trying to beat on big companies by any stretch of the imagination. It's, it's a practical solution to the problem but you're funding your own retirement you're directing what 
investments you want to put in, given the pool of investments made available. And when you leave, you take that with you when you go to another employer and your 401 and you can drop your 401k in their plan or you could take that 401k and roll it into an IRA. You have a lot of choices. Are there are there penalties for that for when you switch companies or if you no. if you roll it into something else? No. It's all trustee to trustee. There's no tax, there's no penalties. As long as you don't take the money and not replace. I mean, listen, it's to, fine. for me this is as as someone who's running a business. Right. This is a huge incentive to keep employees, keep good employees. Absolutely. You know. So this is this like Max. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for example. For example. I mean, we'll go with the we'll go with the lowest hanging fruit here, Max. Okay. Yeah. Right. okay. <laughs> Frankie. <laughs> Where's but her for all one K? We're actually talking to Get her a social. We'll put her on the plan. <laughs> right, she don't have much time left. This dog's back legs are going already. It's such a shame. Let's not pick on Frankie. All right, you're right. She's just, she's listening. She's a good she's a good girl. Let's not pick. You know what Frankie. the good thing is? All pugs look the same, so I can kind of replace her and put her on all the. Uh, <laughs> wow, no that's cold, man. That's so cold. Long. It's a good thing she's showing her back to you. I don't blame. <laughs> but uh, I'm we're we're in the market. So we've been doing our numbers, really doing our numbers. So I took over seven, seven, eight years ago. I'd say for the past three years. And I'd love to actually show you the spreadsheets I built that we run our numbers on. But I think now we're at the point where we can start shopping this stuff and shopping pension plans for employees or, or benefits plans for employees. And I think that these guys who are coming in into the trades, into this, this is stuff they need to think about. You know, it's too like, many like companies with one man, like one guy working. Right, you know, one man shows and and not able to add another guy because they can't pay the proper amount. Yeah. They can't give them the benefits of four hundred one k's, retirement plans, all that kind you of can stuff. Keep they it really, don't. really simple. And the the two biggest things I would think any employee or prospective employee is health care, which is ridiculously costly, Ugh. costly, and pension. And and those are the conversations we have all the time with our clients. You know, we had one today. We've got a guy. They run a, a, a pretty intense company that deals in the construction industry, this particular aspect of it. Um, and he wants to bring on a new employee. And their policy is we will pay for the health care of the employee. Anything over that, if you want a family plan, yeah. we normally don't pay. And we're talking about that today. And I think the cost to the employer for uh, uh, an employee was something like um, 800 hours. Yeah, it's insane. A month. It's insane. But the cost for the family plan was $2,400 a Ooh. month. Oh, my God. Okay? So this was a key employee. He had a, has got real good skills, okay? Uh, good inside the, uh, 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 the shop. And good out in the field should something break. So he said, I can't, I can't, I got to have family insurance. So the employer came back and said, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll double it. I'll pay the first 1600 a month. The other 800 you have to pick up. And the employee said, that's reasonable. I'll, I'll, I'll go with it. Okay. And... Those are the kinds of conversations we have. What's the most cost-effective way to put that in place, mm -hmm. you know, so that we can get a tax write-off and help the employee? And we went through that whole conversation, you know, and then they talk about pensions because, you know, not everybody's 20 or 28. Yeah. A lot of them are in their 30s and 40s, you know, yeah. and they're family men and women. So you've got to talk about some type of 401K that's low cost to be administered so the employer's not burdened with with administrative costs and at the same time the employee wants to participate at whatever level they can yeah okay you know we've got five employees in my office and other than myself i'm the only one that contributes to the plan as an as an employee as an employer i contribute to all five they don't participate yeah but that's okay because they it's still an incentive. Yeah. And I get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, we gotta we're gonna wrap it up soon. Okay. But, um 
This is a ton of good information. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest, I have to watch this thing like three times just to like, so I can take good we notes. We may have to do another one. <laughs> yeah. I think so. We're going to really? do a follow-up. break up. it down in modules. But yeah. you know, the only way we'll know a lot is the feedback in. that we get. Yeah. So hopefully we're going to get from some all good twelve feed- people. From yeah. all twelve people. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> I want to know what is the biggest mistake that your clients it doesn't have to be big time. I'm talking small guys that come in. They're in a certain industry that has nothing to do with finance. What is the biggest mistake that they make and they end up getting themselves in trouble? Not the talking road? to us before they do. How often do you think that somebody? With a smaller business, should come to you once a year, twice a year. Never once a year. No, once a year is too late, and it's after the fact. Yeah. And again, all I'm doing is cleaning up a mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it should be quarterly, yeah, semi annually. I, I would say touch base on each yeah, quarter. And it you know, we're not talking you know hours long meetings. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, a lot of my that- guys will drop by. Here's the here's the records. How's it going? What's going on? And that's when it spurs, hey, you know, I'm thinking about a, buying this piece of equipment or I'm thinking about this truck or, you know, a question arises just just in the chit-chat, and the, you know, in a five-minute time frame. Yeah. But it, then it might expand to 15, 20 minutes. Right. You know, but then you're preventing a problem or you're planning. You have yeah. a conversation about it. That's where the, the, the value comes in and that's what makes sense, Right. Otherwise, at the end of the year, I can't help you. Right. Yeah. We could talk about next year, but I can't help you with the yeah. prior year. I mean, I, I would assume that that's, that's it. Just not. To, it's almost like not talking to your lawyer or not telling your lawyer all the, all the whole story. Talk to your accountant. Yeah. I, I mean, mean guys, look, the you're, coffee's you're, always on in our office, so it doesn't matter to us. It's welcome. And you you're got that welcome. nice, comfortable couch. We have co- comfortable couches, you know, and <laughs> our, our toilets work most of the time, <laughs> so it's great. <laughs> Um, now, they know, now they do. Now they do. They're all working now. God only knows for how long, but yes, they're all working now. Any other so, advice? Yeah. Any other advice you want to give uh, the listeners out there? Generally, ask the question. There's no question that's stupid. There's no question that's not important. Um, There's some I, I'd questions. rather you ask the question and I can answer it and and. I've never gotten off the phone and go, wow, that was just stupid. <laughs> That's never happened. Tell the truth. You've gotten no, off no, the phone no, and go, no, no, Jesus. That, honest to God. I, I, and we've got clients in all the industries. Yeah. It, you know, from psychotherapy to dentists to doctors uh, uh, of all specialties to electricians and plumbers and masons and carpenters uh, to real estate you know, brokers, real estate agents, um, to defense you, contractors. You've okay. got a great staff over there, too. I mean, they're very... We beat them into submission all the time. Yeah, <laughs> well, you, sometimes you have to. You do. That's why we keep the Louisville <laughs> Slugger in the corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark, listen, I appreciate you coming on. Oh, I'm glad This was a much-needed episode. Yeah. Cool. Very a cool. much-needed episode. Listen, I'm going to pl- I'm gonna plug it again. Okay. Mar- Marson Associates in Emerson, New Jersey. 85 Kinder Kamak Road. 85 Kinder Kamak Road in Emerson. What's the phone number? 201-599-2235. Oh, well, you got a 599 number. Oh, huh? I got a good number. Yeah. <laughs> I paid for that. That's a good number. <laughs> What's the website? Anything online? www.marsancpa.com. And if you want to visit our financial services, www.titanfin.com. I'm telling you, if you guys want a good accountant, go to Marson. Uh, it's a fun, enjoyable. We have a lot of good conversations. Talk about a whole bunch of stuff every time we go over there. Absolutely. I mean, I'm over. And we're get a over there. Plumbing work done too. Well, that's what we're there <laughs> mostly for. But um, listen, man, I appreciate you coming oh, on. That's great. Thank you, folks. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned with us next week. Uh, season two. This is the kickoff episode. I'm so glad you guys joined us. We have a ton of good, really cool guests this year. So stay tuned. Again, if you guys are interested in being a guest on the show, we take applications right from courtsplumbing.com. Just go to courtsplumbing.com, click the podcast button, and then click the application to be a guest. Fill out everything, and we'll get you on. It's a great time. We hang out. We have a couple drinks. Loosen up. Talk about the industry. It's a ton of fun. But, folks, stay with us next week. And uh, what else you got? You got anything to say? I kind of blanked out. That's why I kind of threw it in your He's lap. got nothing. <laughs> He's got nothing. He's done. There's so much information to take in from He's that side of the table. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's parsing it all up. 
No, how much is... money do I have to give him to make me able to retire <laughs> by 65? Oh, we'll have that conversation <laughs> off camera. That's it. We're going to have to do it on the couch. But uh, listen, Carry folks. Carry the tube. <laughs> <laughs> listen, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. We really appreciate all the listeners we're getting, and we will see you here on the next episode. Have a good evening.